Hi there, and welcome to our online church service this morning. So good to have you with us. You know, we would love to get connected with you, especially if you're our guest this morning, if it's your first time here. We'd love you to get in touch with us. Yell out in the comments if you're watching for the first time, and we'll we'll chat with you. Um, we'd love you to get in touch with us. You can send us an email, info at cityimpactchurch.com, or you can click the uh, I'm New link that's coming up in the chat right now. Or you can text CONNECT to 4040 if you want to get in touch with us. The best way to stay in touch is to join our online campus Facebook group. That's where we are building a community that's taking place during the week. You know, Liv and I, we often say that it's not just about watching a service every week, but it's about getting connected. And so in that online campus Facebook group, we're chatting during the week. We have small group meetings. We we pray for one another. And it's a chance for us to let you know what's coming up. And it's a chance for you to ask us questions and, and build community. That's where all the conversation and all of that doing life together is taking place. So I'd love to invite you to um, join us on our campus Facebook group, all right? Happy birthday if it's your birthday today from all of us here at City Impact Church. Let us know if that's you so that we can give you a shout out in the chats. And uh, we're going to take up an offering right now. So we'd love to give you the time, give you a moment just to get that ready. And you can give online. In fact, all the ways that you can give will come up on the screen right now. And uh, while you're getting ready to give, you know, We just want to say thank you so much for your generosity, for your faithfulness, and, you know, for continuing to support this ministry. Man, we're so, so grateful. We're going to have a message in just a moment. uh, But before we do that, I want you to check out this video clip. It's from our kids' YouTube channel. I want to let you know that we have a whole kids' church online just for you. So you can even get your kids set up watching kids' church while you're watching big church. We also have a youth online. But let's check out this one video clip from our kids' YouTube channel. Thanks, team. Moses made a huge mistake in Egypt, and so he ran far away to live a quiet life. One day, while he was looking after his sheep, he noticed something strange. A bush was on fire, but it wasn't being burnt up. Curious, Moses went over to the bush, and behold, God spoke to him through the angel of the Lord. Moses. Moses. Moses answered, Here I am. And God told him to take off his shoes because you were standing on holy ground. I have seen my people suffer in Egypt. I will bring them out of that land and into a new land. Moses was in shock. He was hiding from Pharaoh. He didn't want to go back there, so he said, Who am I that I should bring Israel out of Egypt? God reminded Moses that he had chosen him and would be with him. He asked Moses what he had in his hand. Moses held up his staff and God told him that he would do great miracles with it. All Moses had to do was be obedient and brave. He was walking on a hill And he saw a bush on fire The fire was the angel of the Lord The angel spoke to Moses I'm asking you to set my people free Even though he was so nervous Moses, he accepted faithfully Hello and welcome. So great to have everybody tuning in for church today. I believe we've got a message that will absolutely bless you and I encourage you to lean in to what God's got to say today. My sermon is entitled today, Don't Worry, God's Got You. Don't worry, God's got you. At this time of year, I've been having conversations with some people and conversations which are usually so filled with optimism a bit of reflection about you know, the good things that have happened last year, but optimism about what the year ahead has got for people. There, there, there seems to be a, a sense of lack of optimism in these conversations I've been having. Usually people are telling me about their goals, their New Year's resolutions. They're telling me about their dreams that they've written down and they've magneted to their fridge. But 
instead of that, there seems to be uh, a way that 2020 has knocked that optimism out of some people. And the conversations I'm having are instead about how they're worried about the uncertainty about what this year could look like. They're, they're concerned and even anxious about, you know, what could lie in their future. And what I've discovered is that people are, are being, uh, the, the power of what people are facing is, is causing deep-rooted concern, deep-rooted anxiety and worry and fear about what this year ahead could look like. You know, perspective is an incredibly powerful thing, is the ability to completely change the way we view the day we're living in today, and not just that, but also what could be coming our way. And, you know, this deep-rooted sense of worry and concern and uncertainty about what the future holds uh, and the attitude that people seem to have about what could be coming their way is so starkly in contrast to how I see some of uh, the great people that we read about in the Scriptures. The, the Apostle Paul, for example, a man who literally wrote a lot of the New Testament from a prison cell, spent a lot of his good years in prison, had been beaten and whipped and stoned and left for dead and shipwrecked, bitten by snakes and, and persecuted, had been mocked and, and cast out from groups of people that you know should have accepted him and despite everything he faced his confession remained to live is Christ and to die is gain he had this amazing perspective that no matter what faced him in this moment today no matter what may be coming up in his future that God was good that that what was uh, what lay ahead for him in eternity was greater than what he could face and even Jesus our great Savior the Christ you know, when he was going through the most horrific of circumstances, uh, an unjust trial, uh, uh, a, a corrupt crucifixion, he was being mocked and beaten. Even then, he still had time to take a moment and make sure that his mother was cared for. He still had time to ask for forgiveness for those who persecuted him. To me, this speaks of the ability to take a step back from what we're facing today and see with an eternal perspective about how God has, a, has good things for us in eternity. And what we're facing right now doesn't need to dictate how we feel or uh, you know, the level of faith or, or how much worry we have in our world. And I believe God's words to us today would be, don't worry so much. Stop worrying about tomorrow. I've got you. I want to read you uh, some passages of Scripture today. And I've been reading these Scriptures. I've been so encouraged about what God's got to say. Uh, His encouragement for us that we can be of good cheer, that we don't have to carry a burden of worry or anxiety today. And uh, these Scriptures are more than just, you know, nice self-help things. They're not just... Uh, some manifestations that if we will hard enough, you know, we can will them into existence. Instead, these remain rooted in God's character. They are, they are promises directly from God to us today. And the Bible tells us that His promises to us every day are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. What that means is if we're in Christ, these promises already belong to us. It is so it is, yes it is, this belongs to me. And so, I want to read you a passage of scripture uh, from Matthew chapter 6, from the gospel book of Matthew. And uh, we're going to be looking at verses 25 through the 34. And I'm going to share a little bit. I believe you'll be encouraged about how you and I don't have to worry because our God is faithful and has us at all times. So verse 25 in the English Standard Version says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet the heavenly Father feeds them. Are you and I not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious 
saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for today is its own trouble. I want want to encourage you to join me in prayer right now. Lord, we thank you that your word to us is truth. We ask, Lord God, as we take a moment and we look at your scriptures, we look at what you would have to say to us, Lord, that it would be life-giving, Lord, that you would stir the faith of every single person listening. We ask, Lord God, that you would speak to us again, that your sheep would hear your voice. We would recognize you as our shepherd and we would follow you, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that every single person who is listening or watching or tuning in today would be blessed by your word. They would leave this place encouraged, full of faith, and most importantly, without a burden of worry for what's to come, but instead with a confidence that their God is for them and therefore no one can be against them. I'll be honest, uh, when the lockdowns rolled around, the COVID lockdowns rolled around, I had some moments of worry myself. I remember thinking practically, well, if my income disappears, I can't pay my mortgage. How, how does that work? And I preemptively reached out to my bank manager and you know, queried around uh, g- getting a, a home loan holiday or a, you know, a pause on our mortgage payments just in case that happened. And I, I began to think about you know, contingencies for how we'd make sure that the kids had food and were taken care of and all those things. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, to not slip into worry, to not slip into deep anxiety, uh, you know, that, that was a battle for me. That was, I, I had to deliberately choose some things and deliberately fight some battles in my mind to make sure that is not where I dwelled. And, you know, throughout this process, I was, of course, found in my word. I was reading the scripture and uh, this verse, this chapter popped out to me. And a couple of things specifically I want to talk about today that, that highlighted to me that perhaps I had been caught up too much in the things of this world and not enough in leaning in and trusting in the one who is unshakable yesterday, today, and forever the same. And so I, I want to encourage you to follow along with me today as we look at a couple of these things. And, and I believe once you can find and you can pinpoint through the Scripture what these things highlight, it gives us the ability to change direction in our heart, to, to shift some things internally, to make sure that Christ is indeed our rock-solid foundation in the good times and the hard times. You know, through it all, that Jesus remains our author and perfecter, that He remains the one we look to. And so the first thing I realized as I was reading verse 19 through 21, it says, Do not lay up treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. This is just a few verses before the, the chapter I read before. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart is also. I remember as I read this, I had this dawning realization, and I believe that I wouldn't be the only one that realized I had placed an unhealthy reliance in the temporal world. I had begun to lean more and more on things which never promised to be there forever, which was never promised for eternity. And instead, we are encouraged in the scripture to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. But, but I'll be honest with you. The life we live has such an immense amount of comfortability, has such an immense amount of ease, it can be awfully difficult to wrap our head around the fact that eternity could be better than what we're living right now. I don't believe I'll be the only person that faces that, especially those of us who are in New Zealand or Western countries where you know, we don't have to even consider the fact of finding firewood to start a fire just so we can cook our food or you know, we just put it in the microwave and put it on for two minutes and walk away. There is an immense amount of comfortability. This life we live is getting pretty good. It's getting pretty good. And the better it feels to us, sometimes the harder it is to grasp that what God has for us in eternity can be better. But I would suggest to you today that the best day you live here is the baseline for how great eternity will be. 
You know, the Bible tells us that in, in heaven, there will be neither, uh, neither sorrow, nor pain, nor suffering, which means it will be completely devoid of those things. But I understand, and, and in my own personal experience, it can be difficult to grasp and wrap our head around that that is truly the fact. But a lot of us, I think, will find ourselves unconsciously or, or you know, not deliberately at least, forming an unhealthy reliance on this temporal world. Obviously, we are tripartite beings. We are body, soul, and spirit, and our body requires certain things. You know, we require food, we require water, we require sleep and warmth, so we so we don't die. You know, uh, but you know, most of us that are watching today aren't in the place where we're genuinely concerned about where those things will come from tomorrow. And so even though we find ourselves further down the spectrum, we may be worried about, you know, having the latest car or, you know, or, or, you know, having money in the bank or buying the next bigger house that has more bedrooms or, you know, we may be further down the spectrum, but we can still find ourselves just like in the scripture, worrying about things which promise to not be here forever. You know, that, that scripture, I, those verses I read said that treasure on earth, no matter how great it is, no matter how bankable it is, you know, ultimately moth and rust destroy. Ultimately, people can come in and steal. In other words, there's never going to be a guarantee that it will live forever. In fact, I would suggest that nothing in this world, even the things we cling to, our properties, our commodities, our finances, our materialism, none of it will last forever. Moth and rust will destroy. Kingdoms come and kingdoms go, but through it all, our God will remain the same. King of kings and Lord of lords, through it all. Our Lord God remains steadfast forever. Now, if you're hearing negativity in that, it's because you're hearing the wrong thing. I'm telling you today that no matter how great your material gains are, it will never compare to the steadfast faithfulness of your God. And that should encourage you today because through it all, God has got you. God has got you. So there's a, there's a scripture which tells us that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And while everything else may be shaken, our God remains unshakable. Our hope when placed firmly in Him, our feet when placed upon the rock-like foundation of Christ, will not shake no matter what we face. And so sometimes we find ourselves uh, you know, clinging to things that are shaking, and we only realize that we're clinging to them when they start shaking. And I believe that maybe this past year has been a moment for a lot of people where they've realized some of the things they clung to, some of the things they were depending on, some of those things that had become crutches to us crumbled very quickly in the face of this global opposition. But I want to encourage you that through it all, one person did, was never intimidated. One, one God was never shaken. One God was never overwhelmed or concerned. And today you and I are able to lean on Him and trust that He will not be moved. Every single day we have a choice. And I encourage you today, where will you fix your eyes? You know, it, it, the Scripture encourages us to pursue righteousness, to pursue righteousness. A pursuit is always led by what we look at. So if we're looking at these other things, ultimately our feet will follow. I remember my, my daughters, uh, I bought them this little electric car and they would drive around in their car and they, would turn, and they would turn over their shoulder. They'd be driving straight forward, but they'd turn over their shoulder to look behind me to tell me, look, Dad, I'm doing such a great job. And as they turned, they held onto the wheel and they turned the wheel and they were heading towards the edge of the deck and I'd have to sprint and grab them before they, they drove off the edge of the deck because they took their eyes off what they were meant to be pursuing and it co almost caused them ruin. And so today I want to encourage you guys to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. You know, no matter how your year is going to be starting, no matter how everything's going right now for you, I want to let you know that if you would look to Him, He will never let you down. He is good, He is dependable, and He is faithful. So let's be deliberate in what we set our eyes on. Let's be deliberate in where we're leaning and placing our trust. So there's always a gap between how much we can prepare and plan for, how much we can dream for, and actually the reality of when it happens. And that gap is trust. So what is your trust placed in today? The second thing I realized through this time, and as I was reading this scripture and God was revealing some things to me, is that uh, He began to question my motives for some of the reasons why I did things. And I found very quickly that our motives 
point to where we're looking to for reward. Our motives are a symptom, but they show us where we are looking for approval, where we are finding our reward. And Matthew, that same chapter I read all those scriptures out of earlier, the very first verse of that says this. It says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. It goes on to challenge these three specific, uh, three specific things. It says, First, in your giving, don't give to the needy so other people can see it and so other people look at you and praise you and, and esteem you and consider you, uh, you know, greater for your generosity. And it goes on to talk about fasting. When you're fasting, don't be the guy that drags your shoulders around like, oh yeah, you know, just fasting, so holy, so pious. Instead, it tells us to wash our face so others wouldn't even realize and do it in private. In other words, we're doing it unto the Lord, not so other people would see us and be enamored by us. And, and finally, it talks about prayer. It tells us, not to stand on street corners and pray loudly so that people hear us and, and, uh, and, and think of us as pious and eloquent and wise. But instead it tells us to draw aside and it says what we do in private, God the Father sees and He rewards. And I wholeheartedly believe that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. But even myself as a pastor and, and a preacher, there have definitely been times where I found myself putting the, the, the cart before the horse. There have been times where I found myself leveraging my time with God, particularly in prayer and Bible reading, because I know I have a pre, pre-scheduled outward working of my personal faith. In other words, in the next three weeks, I may have to write five or six or seven sermons. And so when I'm reading His Word, no longer am I just enjoying it because, oh Lord, I just love to be in Your presence. I love to hear You speak to me. Instead, I'm looking at how can I leverage this Scripture so that I can serve these other people by by writing this sermon. And and, and the danger is that through the seasons, it becomes robotic. Through the seasons, our time with God, our pursuit of God, instead of being intimate and personal and, and relational and, and authentic and sincere, it becomes a mean to an end. Now, I know a lot of people that are watching this won't necessarily be preachers, won't necessarily have to have a, a pre-scheduled moment where you have to get up on stage of the church and, and sound holy and, and you know, do, do some acts that, that to, to serve other people. But it happens in all our worlds, whether in our marriage or with our kids or you know, in our businesses where there's these pre-placed expectations and obligations and things we, that pe- other people place on us and sometimes we place on ourselves, which are moments where we have scheduled into our time, a time where there's an outward working of our internal faith. And so all of us can find ourselves sometimes leveraging our time with God with insincere motivations. Instead of being so purely about being with God, it's instead because I know that in three hours and 47 minutes, I have to accomplish this thing for God on behalf of other people. And so my challenge to us is this, is that it should be a priority because God. It should be a priority because the creator of the heavens and the earth. It should be a priority because matchless is He, because there's none on heaven or earth who compare to Him. And despite all those things, how majestic and holy and righteous and incredible He is, He has made a way for you and I to commune with Him. But instead, sometimes it becomes a priority because others are relying upon it. See, motives, when they're wrong, they, 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 they reflect us looking to approval in the wrong place. And when our motives get wrong and we begin to do pursue God or pursue our, in our time with God for insincere motives. We're doing it because instead we know that other people will be looking at what we're doing in a certain time. It's what it says to us is that no longer are we pursuing God for His approval. Instead, we're now seeking Him for the approval of others. And when our approval, where we find our reward, where our treasure really is placed in other people, I want to let you know you're placing it in a dangerous place because that's a shakeable place. Because by, by its very nature, there will be some things in your walk with God. There will be some things in your pursuit of God. There will be some things in the Christian lifestyle and the Christian walk, which will never be widely accepted or widely praised or widely approved by people around who are watching you. 
There are some things that, that will never be widely accepted. And in those moments, will you choose to abandon God for the pursuit of others? Will you choose to abandon what God has laid out for you or where He's leading you because your approval, your treasure has been placed in the wrong place? The challenge is when our approval is placed in the wrong place and others disapprove of us, then we find ourselves shaken and we find ourselves shaken to the core. We can find ourselves worried less about what God wants us to be worried about and worried and anxious more about whether we'll be liked or accepted or will we get that promotion or, you know, about those things which, which should never have taken our attention off the true reason we should be pursuing God in the first place. See, our motives remain important to God. When Jesus came, He took the law to a higher level. He said it's no longer about murdering somebody. Instead, if you hate someone in your heart, your motive, if, if just your motive is wrong, it's sin. You know, so it, it's no longer about the act of adultery. It said it's if you look at a woman with lust in your eyes, in other words, if your motive is wrong, if your motive, your internal motive is wrong, is considered sin. Jesus elevated it from the law to a, to a position of the heart. And God's desire is for our heart not to be fixated and placed in our, our treasure and our pursuit, not to be in things which shake, but instead to be on Him and Him alone. So we grow, and we're, we're growing old, you and I, today, uh, in, the, in the age where self-promotion is second nature, where social media demands us to be active and present for the likes and approval of others. And it's a, soci it's a society and an environment that you and I have chosen. We've chosen to partake in. And my encouragement to myself and to you is to constantly be more caught up and in, in, uh, in in partaking in a relational, sincere relationship with God. See, the greatest command to us was never to be widely approved. The greatest command was never to fulfill these obligated tasks of Christianity. And see, the greatest command to us, and Jesus backed us up when He said, He said, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. To love the Lord your God. See, if the approval of others ever begins to wrestle for that top spot of priority in your world. It can create very quickly feelings of shame and guilt, feelings of inadequacy. And the greatest way to do it is to lay that down and instead to fix your eyes again on Jesus, to again find your delight in Him. I love the words of King David in Psalm 16 when he says, you know, he says, you are my portion and my lot forever. He determined in his heart that no matter what else he may gain, and he's a king, so he had a lot to gain. He, he already had a substantial amount of riches and resources and finances. He had seemingly everything this world had to offer. And despite that, he realized that God is my portion and God is my lot. There are things in him and who he is, nothing in this world will ever compare to. My prayer for us today as, as we begin another year, no matter how uncertain it may seem, is that we would confidently and authentically be able to say that everything we had once considered worthwhile, everything we had once considered gain, we now count it as loss. We count it as trash compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, our Lord, which means in Him we find our Fulfillment In Him, we find our approval. In Him, we find our delight. In Him, we find our joy. In Him, we do not worry. We're not anxious because we can trust that God has for us. There's a saying that one's man's, one man's trash is another's, trilling, uh, another's treasure. One man's trash is another's, another's treasure. And so while your neighbor may be pursuing other things, let those other things become like trash to you and let God become your treasure. Whether or not God ever becomes someone else's treasure, he, he, God may remain trash in their eyes, may, not worthwhile. I wanna encourage you guys right now, He is one who outlives anything that could ever be gained in this life. And I, I love the, the, this picture 
of how short our life is. We are, we are likened to, to a flower in a field that blossoms one day and is gone the next. And although the flower disappears, you best believe life goes on for eternity. You and I are created for eternity. God has placed eternity in the hearts of every man and every woman. We, we have a desire for what happens after this time on this planet Earth. And no matter how great your 70, 80, 90, 100 years are on this planet, it pales like, like, a, like a drop in the bucket to the eternity that you will spend in joy and peace and hope and love with God if we would choose to place Him first and pursue Him. See, the truth is, is that this internal worry, this internal anxiety, it's, it's a culmination. It's, it's, it's a symptom of uncertainty. And I get why other people would feel that way in the current climate after the, the year that we've had. But if you are in Christ, you have no reason to worry because you don't have uncertainty. God has told us that he's given us his Holy Spirit as a guarantee, a seal, a deposit of his promise, which is yet to come. In other words, we have a hope which is assured, and that is Christ is coming back again. And that if we, if we, out, if we die before he returns, that we will still be raised up and together with him for all eternity. We don't need to worry. Trust and uh, sorry, anxiety and worry may be a symptom, but the antidote is to trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3 says, to trust in the Lord with all, uh, with all our heart and not lean on our own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, it says, and he will make our paths straight. My prayer is this, is that you and I would not be consumed by worry or doubt or fear today. We wouldn't be looking at the circumstances that we're facing or may be facing in the future and let that dictate how we feel about how our life is going to be because there is one who is greater. And even when we're faithless, he remains faithful. Even when everything else shakes, he remains unshaken. Even when the situation seems hopeless, he remains an unshakable hope. His name is Jesus. And if you would lean in and trust in him, he will give you that hope today and every day. We're going to close off and sign off uh, from this, this sermon. And as, as we do, the, the campus pastors are going to pick up and give you the opportunity to respond to Jesus. And my prayer for you is this. If you are here and you're not right with God, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, if your life seems like it's crazy and uncertain and shaking, there is one who will not be shaken. And if you will place your hope in him today, he will welcome you in with open arms and he will show you a life you could never imagine. God bless you. I'll see you guys later. What an awesome message. You know, we want to give everybody who's watching online today the opportunity to get right with God. You know, at City Impact Church, we never let a service go by without giving everyone in the room, or in this case, online, in your room, <laughs> the opportunity to um, give their heart to Jesus Christ. And so if that's you today, if you want to get to know God, you want to get right with Him, you want to make peace with God, then I'd love to lead you in a prayer. Why don't you say this prayer with us? In fact, we'll say it together. Yeah, awesome. And uh, let's, all, let's all say this prayer wherever we're watching. Say, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I thank you today. I thank you today. That you've drawn me to yourself. That you've drawn me to yourself. And I thank you right now. I thank you right now. That you've died on that cross. You've died on the cross. You've forgiven my sins. You've forgiven my sin. And you gave your life for me. And you gave your life for me. From this day forward. From this day forward. I give you my life. I give you my life. And I thank you. And I thank you. For welcoming me. For welcoming me. Into your kingdom. Into your kingdom. Into your family. Into your family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. So good. And I think like we should just celebrate everybody. Yes. Uh, who just gave their heart to Jesus right now. You know, if you did, if you said that prayer for the first time or even as a recommitment, like maybe you just recommitted your heart to God after having walked away from Him for a while, um, then we'd love to celebrate with you. So in fact, if you could do this for me, right, I did. Like, you know, because I'm saying, did you pray that prayer? And you write in capital letters in the chat right now, I did. And uh, we'll get in touch with you. We'd love to get you a Bible. Or you can just, you know, you can give us a wave or you can text connect to 4040. And that'll take you through to a link where um, we can get in touch with you. Yeah, that's really what it is. Eh? We just want to yeah. connect with you, say congratulations and start to help you on this amazing journey.
Yeah, so good. We have three great keys for you as well, if that was the first time you've said that prayer. But before I take you through that, we just want to introduce ourselves. If you don't know us and haven't joined with us before, my name's Liv. This is my husband, Josh. Josh. And we are the online campus pastors. So what that means is we look after everyone that watches church online with us, because we understand that not everyone can make a physical City Impact Church. Maybe there's not one where you're watching, or maybe you're just you're prohibited to getting too long to a local mm. service. So we you are just here happen, for you. You just happened across it online. Yes, true. You might just be visiting with yeah, us. Yeah, that's awesome. We would love you to become part of our online family. So the best way to do that is to go onto Facebook, um, and if you go join the online campus groups, so if you go City yeah. Impact Church that's online. There's and an the online yeah. campus group will pop up and um, jump in to join that. And we would love to have you. Yeah, that's such a good place. Like, cause you know, we, we often say it's not just about watching a service every week, but church is about doing life together. And so we're trying to create like as, as much of an online church expression as we can. And so really, if you join that group, that's the place where we do life together. Yeah, right? we, so we, we have meetings with one another on Zoom. We pray for one another. We, we talk about what's going on in our world. And, uh, you know, we're able to let you know what's coming up in the church. And you guys are able to talk and uh, to us and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. so it's kind of the place where there's community and there's connection. So, yeah, I'd love to invite you to that. Awesome. And we've got church, online church for your whole family. You know, church has played such a big part of Josh and my life. Mm. You know, children's church, youth group have shaped us and shaped our relationship with God. So we mm. have those things online as well. We've got a kids YouTube channel and a youth YouTube channel so that your whole family um, can, can watch church and yeah. be part of church with us and be, um, and what's the word? Like in, Blessed, blessed by That's church. That's a great word. It has been a huge blessing to our lives. So yep. let me quickly share the three keys. Yes. Um, if that was the first time you said that prayer, they're great keys for everyone, to be honest. Um, but that prayer is the start of a journey with God. You know, the Bible says that God is a good father and he wants a relationship with us. That he created the world and he didn't just walk away, um, but that he desires to know us. And you mm. can know God. I know you can't see him, but you can know him. You have been made to have a relationship with God. Yeah. And so three great keys that will help you get started on that journey, that relationship with God. The first key is Bible. Read your Bible. So if you get in touch and reach out to us, we will get you a Bible. Absolutely. Um, there's Bibles online. There's Bibles on our church app. There's Bibles everywhere, but we would love to get you a Bible. Praise God for the day we live in. Yeah, it's so easy to read your Bible. Mm. But read your Bible. Find out who God is, who He mm. made you to be, who is Jesus, mm. um, and that will be a blessing to your life. The second key, do you want to share the second key? Yeah, the key? second key is prayer. So very much like Bible is uh, reading the Bible is something that we should be endeavoring to do as often as we can. Prayer is so important. You know, it's just talking to God. It doesn't have to be this religious exercise once a day or something like that. You can pray to God wherever and whenever, whenever, wherever you are. You know, you can pray while you're driving in the car. It's just talking to God and telling Him about your day, telling Him about what you're struggling with. Uh, you know, and, uh, and and praising Him. And the more you pray, the more you spend this daily kind of relationship praying to God, the more you'll start to hear His voice and understand His voice, especially as you read the Bible. Yeah, so good. So, yeah. Very good. Praying, praying reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. And the third one is join a church. You know, connect, connect. with us. You're, you're, you're connected with us right now by watching online, and that's awesome. But you might have a, a local church in your area that you can go to. I would encourage you to go to a physical church if you can get to. If there's a City Impact Church in your area, of course, we'd love to have you. You know, you'll find a great family to be a part of there. Um, if, if not, and you want to stay connected with City Impact Church, you can stay connected online. Join that group on Facebook that Livy talked about, or go to a church in your local area. I think it's so important to be part of the yeah, body of believers. Awesome. Join a church, get connected. Yeah, that's awesome. So good. Great. Well, that's all from us. Yeah. That's all from us. We want to say that um, I hope you have a great week. Be blessed. And uh, we'll quickly pray if you pray for everybody. Yes, and then awesome. we'll go and close the service. Awesome. Father God, we thank you for everyone watching with us today. We pray that you will bless their lives this week, bless their families. Father God, we pray that you will watch out for them. Father mm. God, that you will protect them, that your covering yes, will God. be upon them. Father God, I pray that your favor will rest upon them and the Spirit of God will be in their lives this week. In Jesus' mighty name, mm. amen. amen. Awesome. Thanks for joining us at church. We'll see you next week. Bye. 
Over the past year, we've been filming a legacy project. Wow, I tell you, it's one of my greatest privileges and greatest joys and greatest honors to be able to put down on film for you, for you to be able to learn and to be able to listen and be able to watch so much wonderful material that I've learned over the years. Obviously, I don't know everything and I haven't learned everything yet, but you know, there's been so much and we're talking about things like the, you know, the three feasts about the tabernacle of Moses, the tabernacle of David, but things like attitudes, you know, there's so much depth there. And uh, you know, 13 signs to a cult, all kinds of interesting material as you go through. So I wanna encourage you to open up your computer, check out the Legacy Project on YouTube and check it out on our website and have a look at this, some of this great material. I know you'll be blessed, I know you'll be inspired and I know they'll be a great blessing to your life as they have been to mine. So thank you so much for tuning in to the Legacy Project. We are sons, we are daughters, we are mates, we are generations. Here, you'll feel welcome no matter who you are and meet real people, people just like you. We are adventure seekers, we are risk takers. We're co-workers, we're hard workers and we're hard cases. We are mountain climbers, we are mountain movers, we are game players and we are game changers. We're glass half fullers. We're future thinkers and we're coffee drinkers. We are sweethearts and we are sweet tooths. We are housekeepers and caretakers of our place and yours if you need it. Here at City Impact, it's fun, it's rowdy, it's honest and it's exciting. And you're invited to come and be a part of it.